All right. So let's try this again. Um, you don't know that there's anything that happened. But, um, yeah, I found out when I opened up this uh, PowerPoint that it had cut my strip off because it made like a cool design. So it wasn't actually a sinus tachycardia strip. So you couldn't see the whole thing. So anyway, back back to sanity here, hopefully, or maybe insanity, but you're still rolling with it because you got to pass nursing school. So you're stuck with me for a little bit longer, um, but you won't always have to listen to me. Don't worry. Um, so sinus tachycardia, um, we've been talking about all of the normal rhythms, the sinus rhythms, um, and we've talked so far about normal. We've talked about sinus bradycardia where everything's normal, but it's a little slow. Now we're going to talk about sinus, um, so I said sinus bradycardia where everything is normal, but it's a little slow. So now we're going to talk about sinus tachycardia, which is the opposite end where everything is normal, but it's a little fast. So again, when I look at my rhythms, I look for all my parts. I have my P waves. I have a bunch of my, I have a P wave before every pointy thing. I'm just circling a couple of these just to show you. And I have my T waves. They're all upright. My QRS is skinny. Everything looks good. Um, and I haven't showed you guys how to counter rate yet, but if you count that uh, you count by counting these top point things, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I, when I'm, and maybe I don't know if you could see it, but I'm counting these things. Um, I, I lost track now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I have thirteen, which equals for a rate of a hundred and thirty. Um, so everything is, um, nor I'm oh, sorry, I did forget the one thing. There's the same distance between everything. So everything looks beautiful. Everything's exactly as it's supposed to be, except I'm moving a little fast. So um, this is still a sinus rhythm. So I'm still, you know, operating from my pacemaker of my heart, but things are moving a little bit faster. Um, one of the things I do want to tell you is look for P waves. If I, if it's fast, but I don't see P waves, I have a different rhythm, which we'll talk about soon. Um, but everything is normal except it's a little fast. So what could cause this? So just like with sinus bradycardia, there can be like normal reasons for, um, for, um, this rhythm. There also can be normal reasons for tachycardia. So for example, if I'm jumping on the treadmill, my heart rate's going to go up. Um, I'm making these videos, <laughs> the stress goes up. No, I'm just joking. It's not exercise, but I would admit that's maybe the stress one. Um, if I'm in physical pain, my heart rate can go up. Um, so those are all normal causes, but there's also pathological or abnormal cause. And that would be if I'm lacking oxygen, my heart rate's going to go up because it's going to start trying to be faster to compensate. Um, if I have a fever, my metabolism and stuff goes up, um, my heart rate starts going faster. Um, uh, dehydration, so lack of fluid. Again, my body's low on fluid, so it's trying to pump some, um, it, it out faster. So there can be a variety of reasons. But the good thing with the sinus tachycardia is it's a lot more simple in the sense that we just want to get down. We, we want to get to the cause of sinus bradycardia too, but sinus bradycardia can commonly be caused by a pacemaker malfunction, whereas sinus tachycardia usually has some sort of outside factor. So if I go in and my patient has a high heart rate, I'm usually like, you know, I'm not going to sit there and, you know, start being like, they must have major heart disease. I'm going to look at for the mate, the, the basic things. What's their oxygen level? Uh, do they have a fever? Are they in pain? Are they stressed out? Um, what's going on? So we always want to treat the cause. Um, cause the, the truth is, is with sinus tachycardia, there are meds we can do. Remember we talked about medications that can lower your heart rate, like beta blockers or calcium channel blockers. So um, both of these can, we generally go to beta blockers just to lower the heart rate. But if I, if I have a patient who has an elevated heart rate because they're low on oxygen, a beta blocker can lower their heart rate, but is it fixing the problem? No, it's actually, you know, kind of like masking the problem. If I have a patient who has a fever and I give them a beta blocker, okay, doesn't fix the problem. They still have a fever. Um, if I have a patient who's in pain, I can give them a beta blocker. It's going to treat their heart rate being elevated, but it's not going to stop the fact that they're hurting. And a lot of times it's not even going to work. And same, um, you know, with IV fluids, if I just try to lower their heart rate without giving the fluids, you'd be surprised. You'd be amazed. Um, when I've given, um, you know, IV boluses of fluid, there's times that I've given it like the patient's heart rate's like 130 something. I give the bolus of fluid. They can go back down to less than a hundred, sometimes super quick too. Um, if the body is just super thirsty, um, and, uh, needs that extra fluid, you have to fix 
whatever the problem is. Um, the really lowering the heart rate is just a band aid or masking whatever the other problem is. Now, not to say that we don't still need to do it because we don't want the heart beating fast all the time. I didn't go into this, but you know, um, you know, we talked about with the heart beating slow. I worry because it's like that slow. It's taken its time. What do I worry about with the heart beating fast? If the heart's beating fast, um, you know, normally you would think that's a good thing because there's more cardiac output. But the problem is, is there's not time for filling. Um, so, um, you know, I have to refill, like, you know, that toilet time we talked about, I need time for my heart to refill. Um, and so if my heart is beating super fast, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, then I'm going to be concerned that um, they're not having enough time to fill. So they're going to have less cardiac output that way. I'm also worried that the heart is going to get stressed out and strained, overworked. And so um, it's definitely imperative for uh, a patient, um, you know, to, we need to get to the bottom of the cause of what's really causing their elevated heart rate. We want to get it back down to that 60 to hundred if possible. So we get down to treating the cause um, and um, really trying to, um, you know, fix whatever really is, I don't want want to say really one more time, fix whatever is actually causing um, the problem. And then if let's say we do that, let's say that I gave them fluids, if that was the problem, I gave them oxygen, if that was a problem, I treated their fever, if that was a problem, their pain, they rested, they're still heart rates up, then we'll go to medications because we don't want them to stay elevated heart rate for long. All right. So um, now that we've gotten through that, let's look at some sinus rhythms and see if we can break them down. And then we're going to do a case study and we'll move on to some other rhythms. So here we have some different rhythms. So like I said, we want to have a, let's see where I can find my thing here. Okay, there it is. Um, so let's look at this first one here. So first I want to see um, all of these are sinus rhythms. So they should have a P wave, a QRS and a T wave all the way through PRS, Q. So then what we want to do, they're all normal. They have the spa same space in between here. Um, so yes, they have all the parts. Like I mentioned, they have the P wave, the QRS and the T wave. So then if these are all sinus rhythms, really what I need to do is just count the rate because that's the only thing that's that's abnormal. So I'm going to count all these pointy things. So you go through and you count all of these like this. And what you end up having is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have a heart rate of 70. Everything's normal. So I have normal sinus rhythm. All right. So then let's go to this next one down here. So I've got a rhythm that has, let's see, oh, that's where it is. I couldn't figure out where the mouse was. Um, they have these P waves. We've got our pointy things. They're skinny. We've got the, they're really ugly looking, but they got these T waves here. Um, and just like as ugly as my little color in here. Um, so I have everything I need. I've got the same distance in between. So these are all sinus rhythms. So now all I need to do is count. So I got one, two, and I'm going to just kind of mark here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I got a rate of 140. So therefore, I'm in sinus tachycardia territory. One thing I'll say is, is on my previous slide for sinus tachycardia, I said that the rate is 100 to 150. Officially, with your book, they say it can go up to 180. But I'll tell you, once you get to 150, you start losing that P wave. And once you lose that P wave, you're out of sinus rhythm. Um, so yes, yeah, so um, you know you still have a P wave there. You've got a sinus rhythm for 140. But again, I've never seen someone who had a heart rate of 100 above 150 that still had their P waves because it's going so fast they get lost. Sometimes it's not that they're even if they're not there, you just can't see them. All right, where am I? Okay, there's where I'm at. Okay, so. But this one down here, so we've got P waves, and I'm sorry, it's so ugly. We've got a QRS and we've got a T wave, even though it looks a little funky. Um, same distance here in between these beats, but I have this, what looks like a slow rhythm. So I've got one, got two, and I got three. Oh, sorry, I didn't do the first one really well. A beat of 30 beats per minute. So, which would be sinus bradycardia. It is a slow rhythm. So that's this is how you go through and interpret. Now these, I know these are all sinus, so it makes it a little bit easier, but um, just know we will get into some of this later. So for this one, let's, um, I'm gonna just go ahead and make it more simple. These are all sinus rhythms. So all I'm gonna do is count. So this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So this one has 130 beats. 
So I am a beautiful sinus tachycardia. So pretty much if you know it's a sinus rhythm, everything is normal. All you have to do is count how many beats per minute it is. So this one is a beautiful 50 beats per minute. Everything is normal. I've got everything else that I need. So I have a 50, which is also we could say a sinus bradycardia. Last but not least, let's count this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've got a heart rate of 80. So if my heart rate's 80 and everything else is normal, I am normal sinus rhythm. But hopefully these little practices help to get you through to start seeing the differences here. But pretty much sinus rhythms, everything is normal, except it's either a it's either a little slow, a little fast, or everything's normal and it's sinus rhythm, normal sinus rhythm. All right, now let's do a case study. So um, this case study says that Carlton is a 46 year old male with no medical history. He goes and visits his doctor due to frequent fainting spells. Hmm, what does that remind you of? His doctor sent him to the emergency room after finding his blood pressure to be 90 over 45. Um, so his blood pressure is low. He's having fainting spells, no history. After arriving to the emergency room, Carlton is found to be in this rhythm. So let's go and look to our rhythm. So we've got same distance between everything. We've got P waves, QRS, T waves. Everything's present. Everything looks normal. What's the only thing that's abnormal? I've got a beat one, two, three, four. I've got a heart rate of 40. So I am, everything's normal, but it's a little slow. I am sinus bradycardia. So that's my first question. What rhythm is Carlton in? So based on that, we are in sinus bradycardia um, because he is um, based on his strip that I'm looking up. So what is causing Carlton's symptoms? So he's having frequent faint, fainting spells and low BP. So if he has sinus bradycardia, that would make sense because his heart is not beating fast enough for him to get cardiac output. That's going to, um, you know, uh, you know, that's what's causing his dizziness um, and, and probably his fainting is, is that literally he's getting so little cardiac output that his brain is not getting enough oxygen to keep doing what it's supposed to be doing. And his blood pressure is low because he has low cardiac output because he's not getting enough blood out. What treatment will he most likely receive? Well, we have to get to the root of the cause. We, it doesn't seem like he has any medical history, so most likely not caused by meds, um, but um, we would want to just make sure there's nothing else that could be causing it. But if it's a pacemaker issue, he may need to go get a permanent pacemaker um, put in, and um, he may also receive medications in the meantime, like atropine um, or put on a drip or get a temporary pacemaker. And how will we know the treatment is working? Um, the heart rate will go up, blood pressure will go up, less fainting spells, um, signs of good oxygenation, things like that. So this is sinus bradycardia. I know this is a different strip, but you know, I just like to mix it up. Um, so this just kind of explains what I already went over. Um, but he's having his fainting spells because of the low heart rate. Um, it depends if he's having no symptoms, which for him is not true because obviously he is having symptoms. We would just monitor. But if it's symptomatic, we would give medications to speed him up, the temporary pacemaker, and then long-term might do that. There's also what are called electrophysiology studies. We'll talk about ablations later. Um, but what's where they go in and they map out where the issue is. Sometimes not so much with slow rhythms, but um, it, it's possible. But with fast rhythms, they literally go in and think of like your heart has this map that can tell them um, when there's an issue um, like how the electric electricity is firing. And so they kind of watch that. And if there's like a pattern, that's just like a bad pattern, they can literally burn off the pathway and um, try to hopefully start a new electrical pattern that is actually more helpful. Um, so really cool stuff. Um, but that's a possibility as well. And that's what they do that in the cath lab. Um, how do we know it's working? Like I said, no more of his symptoms or improvement in symptoms, better blood pressure, better level of consciousness, energy, um, oxygenation, perfusion altogether should look better. Anyway, that is finishing up all the sinus rhythms. Now we're going to get into the abnormal rhythms. We're about to get to my favorite rhythm next. Hint, hint, it starts, uh, it has the initials AF. Um, um, and uh, anyway, I'm going to stop there. See you for the next one.